What is up, it's a Fit Gear Hunter, and today we're gonna do a massive and final review for the Garmin Elevate 4.0 heart rate sensor, as well as a review for the heart rate accuracy on the 965 and the 265. All of this specific, specifically looking at CrossFit or high intensity interval tracking for workouts. So if you like this review, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. So I'm finalizing my review for the Garmin 400 965 and the 265. And in that process, I've been retesting the Garmin Elevate 4.0 heart rate sensor that is built on these and is out on all the primary watches that Garmin is putting out right now. And it brought me into sort of a question after testing all these different watches, how about I just compile all the heart rate data, all the workout specifics, and run one massive correlation chart to see how the Garmin Elevate 4.0 heart rate sensor stacks up against perfection on a chest strap, which tracks by ECG and is typically the gold standard for tracking accurately, especially when doing high levels of intensity or fluctuation of heart rate. So in this review today, we're gonna to look at two specific things. Number one, we're gonna look at heart rate accuracy charts for the Garmin 400 965 and the 265 across eight different workouts. And then we're going to look at the massive chart. This is 87,000 heart rate data points that have been compiled over multiple dozen workouts compiled into one big chart. And we'll see the coefficient of co uh, correlation, which is sort of a the, probably like a premier measure of accuracy when comparing it against a standard compared against a chest strap and just take it from there. So with that, let's dive in to first the heart rate accuracy charts for the 965 and the 265 specifically when compared to a chest strap for doing CrossFit or high intensity interval workouts. And then we'll look at the final compilation of multiple devices flowing into one massive chart and talk about it. All right, so here you can see the first chart. I basically just kept up with the chest strap pretty much the whole time, except for a uh, sort of a wobble on that second hill. Here, second chart, you can see it had some sort of erroneous um, spike in heart rate in the warm up portion, but followed and tracked pretty much every single bit of the rest of the workout, especially the peak heart rate times in the Metcon um, in the middle. Here, another relatively perfect um, overlay, a couple of minor tweaks um, at different points, but following the baseline. Here you get a little bit of noise in the warm up section, as well as a little bit of noise in the lifting section for some reason, but it tracked the Metcon or the more higher intensity sections. Um, you know, not as perfectly, but still highly accurately. Here we had again some sort of random wobble in the warm up, tracked the lifting portion excellently, and the Metcon had some sort of disruption. Although in all of these workouts, I was wearing wrist wraps or hand wraps, so the watch gets moved around at different points, um, but it did have a dip in the middle of the Metcon. Here, I tracked relatively perfectly across all sections, whether it's the lifting. Again, sort of like minor discrepancy in the warm up, although that's lower heart rate, so it's not going to contribute to training load metrics or aerobic or anaerobic training effect metrics, but you can see it tracked the primary parts nearly perfectly. Here we see more disruption in the lifting portion. This was specifically high rep, high weight back squats. So, you know, sets of 10, sets of eight, sets of six. And whenever for some reason I'm under a load on the back, it just seems like my blood pressure with it, it compresses. And most optical heart rate sensors don't track that portion uh, very well, at least for heavy loaded, high volume uh, back squats. But you can see it tracked the majority of the rest of the workout nearly perfectly with a spike at one point, a couple of points actually, but relatively excellently. Here, a few different spikes along the way, but tracking the baseline of all the, the main parts of the workout relatively excellently or perfectly. And then now we're going to get into 
culmination of multiple watches, multiple workouts, all boiled down into an overlay graph. An overlay graph that compares the chest strap to the device and looks at it. First, I just I ran measures for the heavier watches, then I ran measures for the lighter watches, and we combined it all together to one average coefficient of correlation, where perfect correlation would be 1.00. When every time the chest strap said 150 beats a minute, the device said 150 beats a minute. So the closer you get to 1.0, the more accurate the device is. So I played around with the graph because I'm not an expert. And so this is just with all of them full black color. But you can't determine if more are along the red line, which is perfect correlation, or, or less. Um, it looks like it has more noise. So as I changed some of the shading, this... This doesn't even quite capture the level of density across the middle at the perfect correlation line. So this is a little bit better. Um, this is the best I could sort of create. Although when I look at it on the Excel file or the Excel chart, it is much more black across the middle than even the you know picture conversion is picking up. So there you have it, 87,000 heart rate data points. When you're looking at heavier watches, the coefficient of correlation is 0.90. If you're looking at lighter watches, typically under 60 grams, the correlation coefficient of correlation is 0.947, so closer to 0.95, which is a high number. And the average correlation amongst all data points, everything altogether is 0.926. So I would think you should break out the difference between the heavier or lighter and get an expectation for what level of accuracy you're going to get where the highest level of accuracy at 0.94 is that's a that's a that's a high level of accuracy on the lighter watches um, as it especially as it's even nearing 0.95 now what do i think in summary obviously we can see that the 965 and the 265 performed well across the eight workouts but in looking at greater analysis and detail for lighter watches and heavier watches that all flowed up into the data points for the massive analysis chart we can see that the 965 and the 265 would have that coefficient of correlation or comparison of perfection and accuracy of 0.94 and heavier watches like the phoenix 7 the epics the enduro have a coefficient of correlation of 0 0.90, so not quite as accurate. But overall, the Elevate 4.0 is a massive improvement over the Elevate 3.0, which is found on the Phoenix 6, the Enduro 1, the 945, 245, 745, if you're specifically tracking for CrossFit or high-intensity interval training. It is definitely excellent on the heavier watches. It's not as perfect on the lighter watches. I feel like it is trustworthy and reliable with some measures. So my recommendation and looking at all this in summary, I might always my recommendation, especially when doing CrossFit or high intensity interval training type workouts is just to use a chest strap. It gives you the freedom to take the watch off and put it off to the side. If you want to put on wrist straps or hand wraps, it gives you the freedom to do as many types of exercises with wrist flex or barbell weight that you want to possibly do without any interference or any noise or any reduction of heart rate accuracy for the analysis side that the watches provide. If you're using a lighter watch, you know, typically something under 60 grams, if you're using the 255, 965, 950, uh, 265, 955, 965, Venue 2, Instinct 2, Instinct Crossover, that 0.94 accuracy calculation, I would consider very reliable when doing CrossFit or high-intensity interval training. And if you're using the heavier watches like the Enduro 2, the Phoenix 7, the Epics, the Tactics 7, 0.90 is reliable, but it stresses the importance of a chest strap a little bit more. So all of these, I would say, are reliable for tracking CrossFit workouts, just not as perfect, especially if you're using a heavier watch. So with that, that is the full and final analysis for the Garmin Elevate 4.0 heart rate accuracy, especially when doing CrossFit or high intensity interval training, and the heart rate accuracy for the 965 and the 265. The Big Gear Hunter, thanks so much for watching.